Hello and welcome to this webinar where we're going to talk about how to tailor SuperOffice to drive CRM success. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today as we will talk about some practical tips on how to adjust your CRM solution um, to support your business processes. You will also learn the benefits of using low-code, no-code technology and explore how you can use it to get the most out of your CRM solution. Uh, my name is Jeanette. Uh, I've been with SuperOffice for seven years, almost eight. Uh, started as a customer experience operative and now working in product marketing. Um, and I like to call myself a CRM enthusiast and I uh, have a passion for use for adoption, helping companies to maximize the use of their CRM solution. And with me, I have uh, Philip, which uh, have been with SuperOffice for 16 years. Uh, now as a product manager, but you also have a, a, a background in different roles in SuperOffice. Welcome, and can you tell me a little bit about uh, what you've done previously? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Jeanette, and uh, nice to be here. And uh, I have worked within a lot of things uh, in SuperOffice, from support to services and sales. And uh, I think that in our roles, we have worked closely with customers to drive CRM success. So it's very excited uh, to share our insight on this topic. Absolutely. So what we will talk today, uh, about today is, um, of course, how you can succeed with CRM, um, in particular with customizations. We'll talk about why you should customize. Um, and then we will uh, introduce you to some of the low-code, no-code tools in SuperOffice and the different types of customizations. And we will give you some tips on how to make SuperOffice your own um, with tools that we have available and especially that with the focus on low-code, no-code. And we will show you some examples and we will also show um, a demo. So we will... Uh, have about 60 minutes and then of course if you can't uh, be here for all of it you will get the recording after and also feel free to drop any questions on the topic or share your experiences in the chat and we will answer those questions uh, as best as we can during the session uh, or we will follow up after so what defines CRM success uh, it can mean many things, but I think we can all agree that a successful CRM implementation is dependent on how much your team uses the system. So you will see high adoption when uh, reps can clearly see how new CRM improves their ability to do their job. And this should be the preferred solution uh, instead of scattered notes and Outlook and other systems as a source of truth. Yeah, and... Uh... I think one uh, other uh, criteria that defines success is when you gain better collaboration within the team uh, and also better productivity in your everyday work uh, life. Uh, and then the last thing here is that if you work correctly in the system, you get the good data and visibility in the organization and that enables you and the management team to take their effective decisions for the business. Uh, and that's a key uh, CRM success factor. Absolutely. I think also you need to trust the data because otherwise uh, everything else will fail. And mm. uh, I think it, it's often difficult to quantify how CRM has contributed directly to achieve business success. Uh, but if you link it to your CRM strategy uh, or with business KPIs, uh, that will help you set direction. And these, these three points uh, that we're talking about here is very important in... Um, in setting those goals. And we actually asked uh, on LinkedIn, um, what's on your to-do list to ensure CRM success in your organization? Um, and we were hoping for Taylor, the CRM solution, as this is what we're talking about today. But of course, there are other uh, things as well that's important. And uh, the audience uh, voted by buy-in from all stakeholders. Um, and why do you think that is, Philip? Why is um, buy-in so important? Yeah, I think that uh, the daily work uh, within the CRM system uh, must be connected to the company's routines and goals. And uh, those are often set up or handled by top and other stakeholders. So you need a strategy and ownership uh, here. And uh, I think that's the, the reason why. And that's also what we see uh, in the lack of CRM success, the common reasons. 
Yeah, and you see here on the people uh, part here, you have the lack of leadership uh, and the, the clear objectives uh, set. And then uh, you will get poor user adoption for that. And then there could also be a lack of training that the, the people don't know how to actually use the system. Yeah. Uh, and then you have the processes part. And that's uh, if you fail to align your daily work and the business operation uh, with what you're actually doing uh, on a daily basis. And then not planning for change if something is changing uh, for you. Uh, and that's not reflected uh, in your processes. Absolutely. I think, yeah. And also uh, in that part, when you say about not planning for change, I think if you do not customize your CRM solution or you do overdo it, then it's the same problem. Uh, you end up uh, where with a system that maybe no one's using uh, because it's mm -hmm. not supported uh, properly. And then again, you end up with poor data quality um, as a mm. result. Yeah, that's the technology part here. You you need to use the tools and the technology in the right way. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's uh, very important as well. And then the last uh, bubble here is about the business goal, uh, and that's if you haven't have it uh, defined clearly enough, uh, and if you don't have the dashboards or KPIs within the system, I think uh, you also have a reason for. Uh, lack of CRM success. Yeah, I think it's important to use the data correctly, uh, focus on the goals, uh, talk about them in meetings and kind of use the system actively um, from top down uh, as well. So it's, um, it's uh, a part of your everyday uh, work. And you can use you can use it to talk about the data, use it in dashboards, competitions, and so on. So there are many factors uh, to consider when we're talking about CRM success, uh, as we saw on the last slide. Um, but this is what we will focus on in today's presentation. So uh, we will focus on the user adoption, the process support, and how to link this to business objectives. Um, so how do you get started with this, Philip? Is it just uh, buy the CRM system and you're good to go? It can it can be tempting actually because uh, SuperOff is out of the box. It's easy to to start, uh, but I think that you need to do the software your own. So you need to look at your processes uh, and get them inside the SuperOffice uh, CRM solution, uh, and then you need to link them to the objectives that we discussed also earlier, so you can track. Get the right KPIs and see that you are actually doing uh, what you set up uh, in your processes. Yeah, I say tailor it to support your business needs. But so it's becoming that uh, business critical solution. I think that's the the goal. Mm. And I actually hear this all the time uh, when we're talking about um, or talking to customers that CRM is not a mandatory uh, system like ERP, for example. And that's why it's harder to maintain and ensure that good data quality. But I think and I hope that we all agree that Serum is in many ways a business critical solution um, because it's helping you as a company, keeping your most valuable assets, your customers in focus. And as you said, we can you can start pretty much straight away with when you buy SuperOffice, you can add your contacts, you can start saving those customer interactions. And I think we've always said, like, you should keep it simple. And it should be transparent um, that that way it's easier for users to adopt and work in the solution. Yeah, and there are uh, so many benefits for using an off the shelf uh, software like SuperOffice. Uh, uh, you get the solution built on 30 years plus mm -hmm. of uh, years of uh, CRM experience but also the cost savings available by sharing the cost of developing new features and functions, as well as running the software in the cloud between thousands of uh, other customers. Uh, however, uh, there are also many reasons for customizing a software so that it better reflects your particular business needs. Uh, and now we're going into the details where you can tailor information via use of uh, configuration, guides, labels, but also now the new screen designs that we will have a look at. And then you can get automations from CRM scripts, macros and triggers. Uh, 
and also an enhancing and optimizing workflows and supporting your unique business needs and goals. Yeah. But I think uh, when we're talking about unique business needs and goals, uh, no two businesses are the same uh, or do they have the same uh, exact problems. And I think um, your business processes, your goals, they should be supported and visible in your CRM uh, so that your different teams can collaborate uh, seamlessly uh, and also where the customers truly are at the center. But I think as business uh, businesses evolve and your customer needs change, you need to evaluate your processes and continue to adjust this CRM solution to the way you work. Uh, because we need to adapt to new channels, touch points, and strategies. Um, and that's actually a strong competitive advantage. So it's not just a set it and forget it type of solution. Um, you need to, um, it needs a bit of work like in all uh, other relationships. Uh, so uh, when we're talking about customizations, it's not just a one-off, it's a continuous effort. Yeah. And then you could think, okay, how, how do I start and uh, what's the benefits of customization? So I think that we need to see that if we have better efficient process support, then it saves time and uh, costs. Uh, and that will also improve data quality and reduce user frustration. And then you will automatically get the users in and get increased user adoptions because uh, you simplify the task uh, and get automations for the users, right? So it gets more fun, more easy. You don't need to work harder. You work smarter uh, in your daily work. Uh, and then you will get uh, the competitive uh, advantage uh, improving customer engagement, satisfaction levels from your customers, and then uh, resulting in acquiring more customers and retaining more customers. So I think that's the benefits of a customization. Yeah, but usually when we talk about customizations, people think it's too difficult, it's too expensive, uh, but this is possible and it's made so much easier because of new technology, like we're talking about today with the, the low code, no code. And this is also a strategic vision um, of our uh, R&D department. Yeah. And uh, this is a quote from our uh, CPO, uh, Guttorm Nielsen. And uh, he says that sustainability focuses on meeting the needs of the present without compromising the future. So it's uh, very important when, when we're talking about customizations of a business critical system, like our own CRM solution, it can't be too complex to maintain uh, or to make changes. Uh, as your business grows, you need to change your way you work and the tools you use. Uh, and the CRM solutions that cannot change quickly will become outda uh, outdated and hinder the way you work. Not to mention the cost involved in if you need to bring in experts to update or make new customizations before upgrading the system. So, so it all it's all about sustainability here as well. Yeah. And uh, when we're talking about low code, no code, as their name states, um, they require little or no involvement from software developers. So um, it's easy to for the everyday user to use visual interfaces, drag and drop menus, and other solutions to create and change and customize applications. And this uh, this makes it easier to um, to um, you need less time to define, to test, to implement, um, and you get less complexity. Um, also, it's less maintenance, like you mentioned, uh, in, in terms of the sustainability part. And you can also mm -hmm. iterate. If something doesn't work, it's easier to, to make those changes and improve a specific area um, and deploy as you need it. Yeah. So, so uh, how do you do this in SuperOffice? I think that with our su sustainability customization strategy, uh, we want you customers to maintain and develop your own CRM solution as much uh, as possible. Uh, so it's no wonder that we are keeping investing in, in our no-code and low-code options, making them stronger and more flexible uh, as recent technologies allow us to do so. Yeah. 
So let's take a look at some different types of customizations uh, in some slides. Um, and then later on, we will demo how to set up some of the examples using the no code, low code tools in SuperOffice. So uh, when we're talking about customizations, we have a different set of tools and types of customizations. On the first level, uh, we can make changes with configuration, settings, and preferences. And this is done in the admin client inside the solution. And these are available to everyone using SuperOffice as long as you have admin rights. So this can mean uh, adding or changing lists, fields. We can add document templates. We can change um, simple user preferences. We can change labels. Uh, we can add uh, project or sales guides, etc. Yeah. Uh, and also within the product, we have more tools. We have uh, scripts, we have uh, macros, we have the screen designer. Uh, and uh, here we can extend the SuperOffice functionality with automation and workflows using these CRM scripts and macros. Uh, and with the uh, screen designer, we can customize screens and layouts. And all of these customizations are done in SuperOffice. Uh, but usually you need to know a little bit more uh, than just set uh, a, a simple configuration or, or a setting in admin, but it's still the cost of ownership is still a low to a medium. Uh, if you're also using the cloud uh, version of SuperOffice, you can use standard apps from our app store. Uh, we have like Zapier, for example, to in a standard way connect SuperOffice to other system uh, for uh, enable to automate your uh, processes. Uh, but alternative, uh, alternatively, if you can't find a standard app, there are possibilities possibilities within our API and our APIs where you can develop your own integrations and applications that work uh, works together with SuperOffice. And uh, all customizations created with these tools are automatically deployed and operated on the platform, ensuring your customizations are su uh, sustainable and uh, robust over time. Uh, but here we have a cost of ownership that is, is a little bit uh, higher here, medium yeah. to higher. And we're focusing on uh, this, the easier low-code, no-code options today. Uh, so let's see some different types of examples or customizations in SuperOffice that will help you, help you to save time uh, and will make you more productive. Yeah. So this is the examples uh, of no-code, low-code um, that we have in SuperOffice. Yeah, so these are uh, the standard-based uh, no-code uh, configuration so 80% of this is just configuration. And then we have a small part here, 20%, maybe low code. And that's what we call uh, scripting here. So, so first we talk about the configuration. Uh, here we add fields, we change labels, uh, and that kind of thing. And when, when we've done that, we have the new screen designer when we can adjust screens so we can design the relevant fields are available uh, and also adjust uh, the layout. And then the macros, they can be rule-based actions to improve uh, productivity. And then scripts, uh, it's a uh, high level programming langu languages to allowing you to customize uh, even further. We have some examples of that as well. And then we have the standard apps. You know, in the ecosystem, there's a lot of already ready-made customizations like Outlook Synchronizer or Calendar of Calendar or integration to ERP. Yeah. Uh, and if you cannot find the standard app, you have the custom app, for instance, to integrate to internal systems. Yeah, so let's start by talking about the configuration part, but this is the well, it's the easy part, we can say. We can start with that. Um, this is um, for everyone that has admin rights. You can set up and change this. And we actually meet so many companies who do not use this actively. Uh, maybe they did when they first 
started and set up their solution. But uh, these lists are so easy to change and maintain and adapt. And it's the easiest form uh, for customizations. And SuperOffice uh, contains many default lists, such as customer categories, business types, activity types, um, sales types, and many more. So if you want to change default lists um, to fit your company jargon and processes, you can easily edit these lists. And the solution is designed to fit uh, the activity types for most businesses, but some might want to create their own. So depending on the type of business your company is in, you can tailor the system to meet your needs. So for example, you can customize all the main categories to reflect your types of activities. You can add um, new, you can deactivate those that are not necessary, or you can also edit existing ones. And some of the lists are more common to make changes on, for example, category, business, company, and contact interests. And we also have document templates. But um, you can configure the list to make it the fit you, or the way you work. Um, we can also customize subscription types, privacy lists, and request tags. So there's many different types of lists that we can uh, edit in SuperOffice. And then we have user-defined fields. And uh, like we've talked about before, it's all companies and organizations have their own requirements for the information they need to register. So uh, this could be for customers, it could be sales, projects, contracts, and so on. Uh, and as an administrator, you can add your own fields. You can add extra fields to all modules. If it's sales, marketing, it can be in project. And you can also decide what content of the field should be. So it doesn't matter if it's free text, a date, it can be a preset value. Um, it's all possible. So for example, um, by customizing your uh, CRM, you can use find and the selection feature to segment your data based on your own uh, values and fields. So if the follow-ups and actions in your CRM system reflects your sales process, then you can create more accurate sales reports. And like you see here in this example, uh, we've added a field last service control. So we can level up by doing even more. We can, based on this field, we can merge this data into documents and emails using template variables. We can create automatic follow-ups, like booking a new service control activity in six months. Or we can just use it as specific information for the service team, like creating different layouts based on the type of data we want to display to the different teams. But then we're talking about uh, doing some more customizations in the layouts. Yeah, because uh, now when you you have customized your fields now and your lists in SuperOffice, and the next step is to configure the layout. And here you see the screen designer that we introduced in version SuperOffice 10. And it lets you configure the layout of the company card, the contact screen, and also sale and project screens. Uh, and then, then you can fit your information needs and workflows even better. For example, you can create different layouts to match the needs of different teams and user groups in your company. So uh, I really like uh, the configurable screens and you can uh, add new fields, you can position fields where you want, you can hide the fields that you don't use, you can make custom fields easy to access, and you all can also create and adjust archives, you know, the tabs that are underneath uh, the main card. Uh, and different screens layouts can be used differently for different user groups. Uh, and also you can reduce the information noise. If you have a lot of users, a lot of teams, then uh, there can be a lot of information in the system. So uh, you can reduce the noise and help users find information easily and stay focused focused on what matters uh, the most. So I, can, I think that that can uh, increase user adoption by catering to specific needs uh, of your team. So uh, here we see uh, an actual uh, example when we have used the screen designer to reduce the noise. 
uh, we see a company card and uh, you, you know that if you work a lot with customers you get will get an activity tab filled with the information and here is an an example where we have highlighted some very important sale documents here's a subscription agreement that is highlighted and just the special types of documents will land on this tab so it's a good example uh, how you can reduce the noise and easy find uh, a, a very important uh, type of documents yeah i think also you can like if you have signed agreements that specific type can then be um shown just in this tab right so you can add mm. different information needs uh, in different tabs like you said the activity it has all of the interactions uh, but this is a great way to to show that what's important uh, to me as a salesperson for example mm. yeah and then uh, we can use the screen designer on different uh, <clears throat> entities here we do it on projects and here we see that we have a, a certain type. We have the advanced project added. And then we will highlight some, uh, some fields that is very important. So in this case, we need to have a product owner. We need to have a product manager. We will have a budget and other fields you need for these uh, kinds of projects. Uh, and this works the same way for sale and sales types. So you can also use this, for example, uh, when you have a sale to a new customer, will trigger some fields, but a sale to an existing, uh, existing customer probably asks for less fields, for instance. Yes. And um, then we will move on to some uh, little bit more advanced, uh, because what you see with the screen designer is typically what we talk about when we're talking about no code or low code. Uh, macros is um, also a way to improve productivity and reduce manual tasks through customizations. Um, it's a step up uh, from the screen designer because it's a little bit less visual. You need to understand um, where the data is and the behavior of SuperOffice, but it is um, a user-friendly version of Serum Scripts. So you're able to customize and automate actions inside SuperOffice with an easy to use wizard so that you, uh, will help you set up your macros. So like you see here in this example, it's a step-by-step -step example, sorry, step-by-step -step, uh, wizard. Um, and uh, it's a set of predefined actions executed in a specific order. So you don't need extensive knowledge about scripting to create macros, but again, you need some um, knowledge uh, of how SuperOffice behaves and where to find that data. So there's a number of functions in SuperOffice where you can use macros. They can be linked to specific uh, triggers in the system, such as um, escalations or new message on a request in SuperOffice service. It can be assigned to buttons uh, in defined screens so that users can click a button to perform a set of actions that are often repeated. Uh, and this also makes users work faster and they avoid unnecessary clicking. Yeah. And uh, now we'll see an example, and this is actually one of my uh, favorite uh, features that you have. And uh, here, here is also a, a sneak peek of uh, our new request uh, management solution, Merge in uh, Core CRM. Uh, but what we show here is also available in the current version. So, but uh, instead of uh, typing some information here, uh, update the status. Uh, we can do everything with uh, two clicks here. So under the task button, we have a choice uh, here that says move to invoice department. So what we're going to do here is that we will uh, changing the category to finance. Uh, we will update the, the status and we will also get back to the customer with some information so that we have seen his uh, uh, question but that we have, uh, we're currently processing it. Uh, so uh, just two clicks, and then you will get uh, all the updates. Uh, the status is updated. We have get some more messages here in the request uh, uh, that you see. Yeah, category now is administration finance because this was a finance uh, question. 
and uh, here we see that we have an uh, internal note and a comment that this has been moved by us and also a reply back to the customers that uh, we're still processing this so they g receive something back from us uh, so here is I think that it's just your imagination here uh, and your daily work that sets the limitations so uh, if you can figure out this uh, it's I think it's really fun to do yeah and it saves a lot of time as well uh, it makes it more yeah more fun fun to work with um, when you don't have to do like many many manual clicks mm. so and CRM script um, is a feature that allows you to automate tasks uh, in or modify the behavior of Superoffice as well. But it, it is a script that is um, a little bit more technical. It's a small program written to perform specific tasks and it requires programming skills to set up in comparison to macros, for example. Um, so this is something uh, consultants or our partners can help you with. Uh, but here are some examples of what you can do with uh, CRM script. You can um, customize your workflows and automate. Um, for example, you can use scripts in service um, by setting up if this then that workflows um, to, to optimize your uh, processes. You can also validate input. So if you want to make sure that users enter the correct data, uh, even in user defined fields that we talked about earlier, um, we can block a save if essential fields haven't been filled out. For example, do not save company if a VAT number is missing. And we can also dynamically update content and we can run a code in response to certain events on a website, like what should happen when a new ticket is registered or a sale is confirmed. Uh, and these scripts can run based on triggers, like a certain event in the system will trigger one or more predefined actions. Um, or they can also be scheduled at specific times. So this is just an example of um, a script, but we're using a triggered dialogue. So this is um, a way to interact with users through or displaying um, a dialogue box and acting on a response. And this also actually works in uh, our app, Mobile Serum 2. Can you? Yeah, so... I will just hit play. I think you can talk over. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's fine. Uh, so here we we listen to what happens uh, in SuperOffice, and it's actually that the sale here is been uh, is set to sold, uh, and then we have also we add some reasons here, and then we when we press save here, we will uh, trigger a dialog and said that will we s celebrate this and add this to a, a team space. And then this is the actual uh, trigger dialogue when you can act on responses. So here you can say, no, it's uh, we don't want to celebrate this. Or of course, yes, let's l let the world know about this or trigger this to another system. Uh, and this is uh, what we're discussing here. So it's, uh, it's both a, a trigger and it's also a dialogue and then it, the dialogue and the answer will take you even further. So here you can really set up uh, a workflow or a process. Yeah, and we actually have a, another example of how we're doing this in SuperOffice. Yeah, I, uh, I actually discussed uh, customizations uh, with our support team uh, recently and uh, they mentioned this to me that uh, they used to uh, well, you know, support team, they, they work a lot with TeamViewer to see our customers' uh, behavior on screen and, and guide them uh, through, the, th through the software. Uh, but daily, they were doing uh, some manual tasks, sending out the information, uh, getting, logging in to TeamViewer to get the, the right link and then send it back to the customer. So it it was uh, quite a few steps and it took uh, almost one minute uh, to do this. So so they actually said, can't we just uh, use this uh, uh, action button here and say that when we press the TeamViewer remote, we will uh, talk to TeamViewer software, get the link, 
send it to the customer and start the meeting. So I think that uh, that takes now two seconds to do. And before it took almost uh, one minute. So it was a huge uh, time saver for, uh, for our support team. Absolutely. It's a great example, actually, of what's possible with uh, using scripts. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, I also reach out to one of our uh, customers, uh, and he, he, this is a quote for, from him. Uh, he said that, that the, the strong customization capabilities was one of the main reasons why we choose uh, SuperOffice. Uh, it, it's from Thomas Åkerval at uh, Martinsons, and I also said, "Can you can you sh can you can you share some examples uh, that you do uh, within your company?" And uh, he showed me a really simple uh, uh, but useful uh, uh, customization. And here we see that uh, we have a sale date and we have a stage, and they were really interested in following up uh, after a certain stage. So here the stage is uh, present offer. And then when it's uh, added in that stage, they have presented the offer. And then automatically a follow up should be entered uh, uh, after 14 days so that you could always check back to the customer uh, what they thought about the presented uh, offer. So it, it's an easy uh, yet uh, very clever customizations that they did. Yeah, so it's, it's registering uh, an activity uh, 14 days ahead so that you get that reminder. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an easy one, but it's uh, still a very powerful um, customization that will help you um, get I will, I'm guessing more happy prospects get and on, customers. Get on top of your activities. Yeah. and Yeah, yeah. And there's one more thing. They, they've actually added some um, uh, trigger dialogues as well, right? Yeah, it's uh, also, there are some, they, they check some valid, valid uh, you're, you're not, uh, you cannot actually set a sale to sold if there are, aren't a signed agreement from the e-signature uh, uh, solution. So you need to have uh, uh, the, the contract signed in order to set uh, the stage to sold. So that, yeah. yeah, so validating the- That input? was another one. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, um, I'm guessing as we, we talked about, you can also show this in a separate tab, right? If you have one for sales documents in uh, particular. Mm. Yeah. And then I think the final one uh, that deserves a mention is the App Store, uh, because you do have a lot of ready-made apps that will help you extend functionality and discover uh, new possibilities with the cloud version of SuperOffice. So we have over 120 apps in our App Store, um, and these will help you to increase your productivity, customize your CRM solution, and in general, just offer a better online experience. There's a lot of apps and we keep uh, adding new ones. So um, uh, it's a tip uh, to, to take a look at the, the App Store and browse the different apps that we have. They're also separate or in different categories. So it's easy to browse. So now, Definitely. next up is uh, let's dive into the product and actually see how you can tailor SuperOffice um, with the no-code um, options that we have. We will add some new fields. Uh, we can also add a new archive and change the layout a little bit. And I, will, I think we will try to add an, a macro as well. Exciting. In this demo, I will show you some examples on how you can adjust your CRM to support your business processes. SuperOffice CRM can be used out of the box, so it's easy to get started. And it comes with some set of standard fields and lists, like for example, category, we have business, and you can also fit three customized fields on the first page, like this one. And if you want more, then you can add them to the More tab. And we also have different tabs here with contacts, projects, activities, and so on. And on activities, for example, we have different activity types, 
and documents. And these are also lists in SuperOffice that we can change easily. And all companies and organizations have their own requirements for the information they need to register. And we in SuperOffice, we want customers to be able to maintain and develop their own CRM solution as much as possible. So now I will show you some ways you can take advantage of the low-code, no-code features in SuperOffice to easily tailor it to fit your specific needs. So what we will do today is we will add some more fields, we will add a new list, we will customize an archive, and we'll also change the layout for different teams. And at the end, we will also add a macro to perform a set of actions that are often repeated. And this makes users work faster and they avoid unnecessary clicking. So let's go to settings and maintenance. And here we will start by adding some new fields. And these are some that you saw on the more tab on the company card. We can also add it to the contact card, project, sale, follow up or document. But let's start by adding some to the company card. Now let's start by adding a field with discount. We can change the type of field. Let's save this one. And we also want to add a field with a date showing when a customer has bought and become a VIP customer. And we will also add the discount field to the sales screen. Now we can add some more lists. So we want to see uh, when a customer has signed a VIP contract. And also we want to plan some VIP onboarding activities. So let's start with a template. We'll find this under lists. And here we have a proposal for our premium service. And then we will add a new one called signed contract for premium. And we will also add a new activity type. So now that we've added some new lists and fields, we can start to customize specific layouts and screens for specific types of users. So let's move on to the screen designer. Here we can make changes to the specific screens in SuperOffice. So here we can make changes on the company card, the contact, sale, project and request. And we can also make changes to the archives and we will do both. So here we have made layouts for specific user groups or teams. So we have a default layout. We have one for customer service. So here we can see the fields change. We have MPS score, last service control and onboarded. And we have for sales. So here we have the one we saw before, the number of employees. And we also have a button linking to the LinkedIn profile of the company. So in this example, we want to continue customizing for the sales team. And we want to add the company discount and the VIP fields that we added before. So here we can use the visual editor to design the layout that we want for the specific teams. So we can use this visual screen designer to drag and drop and rearrange the layouts that we want. So for example, we can remove certain fields that are not necessary for a sales team. We can add new ones. 
or we can move them around in different tabs. So let's add the discount field and the VIP customer since, and we will add that to the more tab. And then we will save and publish. So these changes will only be for the sales team. The customer service team will still have their own layout. In addition, we want to make some changes to the archive. So we want to add a specific tab for sales documents. And this will only be available to the sales team. We can also add finance department and administration, for example. Press OK. Then we will edit the layout. We will add a new tab called sales documents. And we want to filter specific content. So we want to see only documents. With the type proposals, signed contracts, quotes, and premium contract. And then save. So now we have a separate archive just for specific sales documents. We also do some changes to the sales card or sales screen. Let's go to sale, go back to main cards. So here we can also add some different layouts. Maybe we want to customize this to the sales team that only works with new customers and prospects. We can edit this layout. So here we will add a new tab specifically for the newbie sales team so that the sales rep can add their comments and their plan on how to close the sale. And we will keep it at two columns, call it close plan. And then we will add a grid. And we can change this to two columns, six rows. So now we'll add some of these fields that I've prepared uh, and add them to the grid. I would add reason to buy, main risk for deal not to happen, if we have the budget secured, any comments to that, if we have access to the one that signs, and also who will sign from the customer side. Okay. And then I will save and publish. So now we have a separate tab where the sales reps can fill out more information regarding how they plan to close the sale. And the final thing that we will take a look at is a macro before we go back to SuperOffice and see all of the changes and customizations that we've done so far. Now, macros are a little bit more complicated, but I want to show you what's possible even without technical or programming skills. So let's go to Serum Script. So from here, we can add a new macro and connect it to a button or a menu in SuperOffice and then manually trigger it from there. Or we can add a trigger so that the macro starts when something happens in SuperOffice. And here we have different triggers to choose from. We have requests if they're changed, we have chats, or we can do things before or after a save in Serum. And in this example, we want to focus on the premium contract. So when the signed contract is archived into SuperOffice, certain things will be updated on the company card, and we will also create an onboarding activity. 
So here I've already set up a trigger based on uh, after saving document that we want to change a company. So if we have the document type signed premium contract and it's completed, then we want to update a company with a new category, VIP customer, and we will also update the date. Then we want to create an onboarding activity. So we add the VIP onboarding type, we add a title, we add the owner, and we'll set 14 days from now with a time and a duration. And then we also want to give a confirmation to the user that the customer card has been updated. And if you want to edit or add more steps, then you can add it here. So here you can see we have different options. So you can build this step by step in this wizard. So now let's go back to SuperOffice and see the different changes and customizations that we've made. On the More tab, we have the new VIP customer since and the discount. And we have the sales related documents in a new archive tab. Then we can move to sales and find an open opportunity. So as you see here, we have a discount field, which we can update manually, or we can connect it to an ERP or another quote system. And then we have the new tab with the close plan. So we can add our comments, check the boxes and add more information on how we plan to close the sale. And now let's test the macro. Let's say that we've got a signed copy in return from John Smith that we want to archive into SuperOffice. So we will create a new document. And here we can add a title and we choose the signed premium contract. And in this case, we have a local copy, but this can also be archived from an email or we can connect it to a digital signature system and archive it that way. But remember that we had to set it to complete. So let's open the document again, set it to complete and save. So now we get the message, congratulations on your premium service sale. The company has been updated and a VIP onboarding has been created 14 days from now. So let's check the company card. Here we can now see that the category has been changed to VIP customer. And on the more tab, we have VIP customer since and a new date. And we also have a new activity created, a VIP onboarding that's 14 days from now. Now there's many ways we can use this type of data. We can use it in document templates or we can add dashboards. So here I've made one for the sales team. So here you can see the upcoming VIP onboarding sessions. So this is just one example. We can also use them in selections. We can reuse the data in email templates. There are many, many possibilities. And this is a great way of using and visualizing the data that you've customized and some examples of how you can make the CRM system support your workflows and processes. And again, help your teams be more productive and deliver unique customer experiences. Okay, so that was the demo. I hope you got some inspiration from that. Um, but I also wanted to ask you, uh, Philip, uh, you've been in the game for a long time and you've talked to a lot of customers, seen a lot of solutions. Do you have some tips um, to our customers uh, on how to get started with this customization? Yes, uh, definitely. I, I think that first you need to uh, understand and know SuperOffice uh, a little bit better uh, so you, that you understand the capabilities and the built-in configurations. And uh, I think this webinar is a good example uh, how to do that. Uh, and there are also a lot of other resources uh, in our community, help file, and also all the great people of SuperOffice that you can talk to. So uh, understanding, get to know the SuperOffice product uh, uh, a little bit better, that's a really good start. 
and and when when you do the, do that you you will you will get some ideas and uh, then it's time to define your needs and outline your requirements what what is important to you like we saw, saw in these examples uh uh, what's important for, for the support team, what's important for uh, the sales team, and so on. Uh, and then you can also seek advice, because maybe, like you told us, there's already an app doing this. Maybe show something on a map or the, an integration to systems that uh, already is, uh, is done. And then, uh, then, you ha then you're all set, uh, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, uh you, you after you uh, you come a, a bit more ahead and done some configurations to to support your team uh it's Im important to revisit them so you check back uh is this still uh, a good way of doing it uh, are you reaching your goals why you actually did this so that you continuously revisiting uh, them and then when you do that, I think that you can fine tune processes and achieve even more uh, results. You you will get even more ideas, uh, work uh, even smarter. Uh, and then uh, the last uh, bullet point here is that you need to have someone or a group or CRM ambassador that document why you do this, uh, what's the reason behind it, uh, so that you can also follow up on this. So uh, appoint someone that's uh, responsible and document uh, the changes and uh, on what you what why you do what, why do you have a field in SuperOffice, for instance? So why do you use it? Yeah. What's uh, why is it important? I think that's actually a very important point as well uh, to document your changes. We we actually have given out a, a routine guide so that you can make it your own and, and keep updating it, kind of telling the users how to use SuperOffice, but also why. Why are we doing this and why have we added these um, changes or, or fields and, and so on. And I think also um, we put ambassadors in plural as a group because if you only have one and that person is sick or quit, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden no one's owning um, the CRM system and the processes. And then it kind of gets to that point where people kind of start to slack and, and, and don't um, add the good data. Uh, and mm. maybe the routines and the, the setup doesn't make any sense anymore. So I think that's important to kind of have a group that's uh, continuously working and improving um, the system, but also documenting that uh, change. Yes. Yeah. Philip, you want to talk about uh, the the yeah definitely uh, the, <laughs> yeah uh, I mean in Super Office we have tools to customize uh, yourself so so you don't need a consultant for small but important changes uh, if you just uh, log into to the administration client and uh, and try it out your yourself but but also when you when you buy into super office you also buy into a partnership uh, with people uh, who truly understands uh, business uh, other businesses and uh, we are here to help you maximize uh, the value of uh, the technology and the crm solution so so don't hesitate to talk to your super office re re representative your, your partner uh, our consultants, uh, I mean, they optimized SuperOffice for thousands of customers during the, the years, uh, so they are quite used to the processes and uh, uh, what we can achieve. So uh, uh, I think uh, you can do a lot uh, yourself, but also don't hesitate uh, asking someone who who who'd done this before. Absolutely. And I think also, like we mentioned, you can just log into your admin and, and get started. Um, and, and I think you can start by um, customizing to your needs uh, and those options that are available in the settings and maintenance module in SuperOffice. So you only need the admin rights to do that, uh, which we talked about the user defined fields. We talked about the lists and also using the standard apps and integrations in our app store. So you don't need any special license to, to use those uh, tools. 
however, if you uh, need more than what is available out of the box, this means uh, customizations like custom screens uh, or configuring the layout with the screen designer. For those instances, we have uh, an add-on called development tools, which is um, a range of tools uh, and add-ons you can use to create customizations of your Superface CRM solution. So this is a subscription uh, that will give you uh, the configurable screen capability, as well as access to macros, scripting, um, and uh, there's a lot of more um, expand or expander services that we've called it before uh, that you will uh, have access to. So as we've shown in this uh, presentation, there are a lot of exciting things that you can do to customize your service solution. And um, as always, your super office rep is more than happy to help you um, with more details uh, regarding development tools and also talk to you about the possibilities. But I think it's it's important to reiterate this um, that it's a continuous effort, really. It's uh, you can do one easy customization like lists and um, fields in SuperOffice, but just know that you need to revisit it. And uh, to to have that group, I feel it's the best uh, idea to discuss the needs of the users, uh, putting your or linking your KPIs, your business goals to, and making a CRM strategy um, is very important and kind of making that into a continuous effort. Do you have any uh, additional uh, comments, Philip? Yeah, I, I think that you uh, you need to get it. You need to spend some time during a, a meeting with your colleagues to discuss this topic. How can we do this better? Uh, are we doing the right things? Do we have the KPIs in place? Maybe a, a dashboard, for instance, that we, we, where we can see that we are we're on the right track so you, you you don't have the daily work and the daily stress and activities taking over so that you you need to remind yourself and the team uh, uh, of why you're doing stuff and, and make sure that uh, it's still the best way so continue to invest some time and follow up on the goals i think it's uh, really worth it that, uh, as the journey with the crm system uh, evolves yes so I think that's all we had for today. Um, I hope you all got uh, some inspiration. Uh, start mapping out your needs, talk to users, uh, start documenting and start uh, trying with the options you have available in the solution. Uh, if you want to discuss uh, how you can take that further, how you can customize maybe with macros or um, the screen designer, for example, uh, then reach out to us. Uh, we'll be happy to, to provide you with more information. So thank you so much for joining and I hope to see you in an event uh, soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.